I'm Conor McGregor. Peace be with you. Welcome to The Dean Show. Subscribe if you haven't already. Conor McGregor, this episode is a special one for you with a special message. We're going to be talking about the mistake that you made, probably the biggest mistake that you've made in your life, and with hope at the end, how you can go ahead and take this mistake and change it, learn from it, benefit from it, so you can gain success by heeding this wonderful advice. And I got an Irish man on the show to help me deliver it to you. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. This is the This is the Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Abdul Malik Ryan. Nah. Of Irish yes. descent? Yes. How you been? Very good. Very well. Good to see you all. We J- did. Just the man for the job. <laughs> we got a special way. message for our Irish brother. We love the Irish, bro- <laughs> our Irish brothers in humanity. Alhamdulillah. Conor McGregor, you heard of him? I have heard of him. He's Irish. He is Irish. From Dublin, I think, yes, right? Yes. We got a special message. We want to do a special episode for him. I'm going to go to this clip and get your take on it. Okay. Me and, J- me and Jesus are cool. <laughs> I'm cool with all the gods. Gods recognize gods. All right, so what are your thoughts on when you hear something like this? Yeah, I mean, obviously you see, you see that you hear the people laughing at what he says, and you see a lot of it, what he does is like an act, and people find it very entertaining, and this is how he got popular. This is how he, you know, is the biggest, highest paid fighter in that, and stuff like that. So, and actually I was reading a book, and it's interesting, and, and many of us as Muslims, we know this, uh, that a lot of these fighters, whatever, whatever they're in, a lot of these sports figures, to be honest, for the last 40 years, all they've been doing is imitating Muhammad Ali, trying to be like Muhammad Ali. Mm-hmm. Because Muhammad Ali was someone who came along at a time when boxing was a struggling a little bit, and he, but he was able to, with his personality and by saying things that were, got people's attention and seemed crazy and by making big boasts and then backing it up, he got like, people really loved that. So... Um, a lot of people, so he's trying to do that act of kind of imitating, but you see that he kind of, uh, especially for us as Muslims and anyone who, 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 who understands the reality of the seriousness of, this, of these things, he goes far overboard here, you know, and he says things that he thinks are funny, but that really show that he doesn't understand what he's talking about. So you see first he's saying that him and, him and Jesus are cool. Me versus Jesus in the other thing, I'll tell you what, there's not a man alive that can beat me. <laughs> But Jesus ain't alive, is he? So I don't f-ing know. Maybe he could come back from the dead. Not, I don't know. Um, I'd still whoop his. You know, it's like he's, uh, he's, uh, you know, and this is this is something that. But at the same, to the same time, he sees Jesus as a human being that he can kind of be cool with and interact. But at the same time, then he goes to say that Jesus is like a god, and he's also a god. So you see the danger of not recognizing the separation between humans and God, and understanding that. Uh, and, and, and that understanding we are not gods and we, are not, we shouldn't put ourselves on that level. And that was something Muhammad Ali, for the most part, he, he, he was careful about. For the most part, he would say that, It's God, Allah. He's my body God. He's your body God. You know, I'm beautiful, I'm pretty, I'm, gra- I'm the greatest of the people, but he would normally not compare himself to God. Mm-hmm. But even he realized that he kind of maybe went overboard at times in the way he would boast and talk about himself and that that when you do that sometimes god humbles you to because and not because god doesn't like you and it's not even but actually if god humbles you in this life when you're saying something like that is actually a sign that god wants something good for you that's that he can could have let you keep going and going and not humble you but now right. is the time to reflect that's exactly what we want we want to take this situation and derive some good for it from it mm-hmm. And just like at a time, you, you know, this is amazing. We had uh, famous George St. Pierre, who's a UFC fighter. We did a show specifically also for him. I can't, I can't sleep at night now. I'm, I'm going crazy. I had issues, man. I, uh, I, I need to relax. I need to get out for a while, you know. I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do. I need, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, uh, I feel like I'm going to left everything out now, but I have to keep some of my stuff, some of 
part of my life personal okay now his boxing trainer is also muslim so we know so he actually contacted us and he he said that he sent that show to him so it got to another ufc okay. champ now we got another ufc champ that we want to get the message to so we're going to leave all of your guys help to help this to go out now we want to derive some good from it so we talk about you know one quality of 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 you can't go wrong with is controlling that ego and, and being humble. You know what I mean? This is something that all the messengers of God taught, knowing your, your limits. And you, you mentioned Muhammad Ali. You know, we know at one aspect it's show business, right? And many people don't understand that even as human beings, you know, you'll say one word, you'll destroy a marriage. You'll say uh, the wrong paragraph, wrong sentence. You end up in life in jail, in prison. But now the words we say against the Almighty. I'm cool with all the gods. Gods recognize gods. I was gonna get it regardless, sooner or later. It was coming, with or without you. And then the God came and blessed you with it. Yeah, right. Now about that coffee. Any, any man God made, you know what I mean? And not only that, I whoop God as well. I, the one who's created us, given us all these blessings that you couldn't even throw a punch, a jab, block a punch, without these blessings from God to insult God like this? Are we uh -huh. thinking? What do you think? Yeah, no, this is, and th th like we said, that's why it's good that God humbles us sometimes. And we all have that, this in our life. Even if we're not, you know, champions and we're not in show business, we all have times where we become, if things are going well, we become very sure of ourselves. We think, oh, I have this job, I have this car, I have this money because of me, because I work hard. And sometimes God has to humble us a little bit. And many of us have this experience through sicknesses, through illness, through some, losing someone close to us. We suddenly realize, like, we have nothing. Like, everything we have, God just gave it to us out of his, uh, you know, mercy and his compassion towards us. And we should just be grateful for it. The main thing is to be grateful for what we have and always be humbled, like as you said, to realize that everything we have is from, is from God. It's not from ourselves. How is the situation with the Irish people? Have they been, I mean, we have one example like Liam Neeson, you know him? Yeah. He was in Turkey at one time. He couldn't stand the Adam, but after some time <laughs> he was just like, there was word of him actually accepting Islam. He's Irish also, right? He is Irish. He is yeah. Irish. Yeah. And, you know, and I think that he said that, you know, he began to appreciate the, the beauty of the of the Adhan and the culture. And you find that with many people, uh, the Irish. One good thing we, we, we say as Irish is that Irish are people, of course, even though we're in Europe, which is true of some other people in Europe, we were at, we were not one of the people colonizing people, but we were colonized by the English. So Irish were people on the bottom of, of the of the reign in Europe and people have a long history of being oppressed and of identifying with other oppressed groups. So you find so many people, Irish people identifying with Palestinians, identifying with their struggle, identifying with struggles all over the world, identifying with different cultures. So you have many Irish people who are close to Muslims and who know Muslims. Um, but now, you know, but, but not, they're not necessarily a religious connection, but they're connecting on cultural and other ways. So uh, we want to know that, again, it's important to, this Islam is a message for everyone, and we want to, you know, share the message in the best way possible. Mm -hmm. We have to be the best example and share the I message. I like that. We're, we're going to take a break, but that's right. M Muslims right now, it's sad to say, are probably the most oppressed people Sorry. on the earth. Yeah. Irish have gone through it. We got another connection. We got more connections to talk about. Don't go anywhere, Connor. We'll be right back. Believe there's not a God. All right. If I told you... You who don't believe in God, if I told you that this glass sprang into existence, this glass made itself, no man made this glass, would you believe it? Would you believe I just told you this thing made itself? No. 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 When I tell you, you wouldn't believe it, right? No, I, the, the, some, somebody's doubting it, yeah, so I'm, no, I'm giving I'm you the saying, answer. That that's she wouldn't believe it. If I turned on this television station, it's popped into existence. It just, no man made it. You said Muhammad Ali's crazy. All right. Well, if this glass can't make itself, if I told you those clothes you have on wove themselves, nobody created them, those clothes made themselves, you wouldn't believe it. But if your, if your clothes didn't make itself, if that glass couldn't make itself, if this building didn't make itself, then how did the moon get out there? How did the stars and Jupiter, Neptune and Mars and the sun, how did nature, how, how did all this come here if didn't know why is something planning to make it? So what I'm saying is, I believe that we're going to be judged. Should a man like Hitler kill all the Jews and get away with it? Somebody should punish him. Maybe he get it, don't get it now, he get it when he die. In hell for eternity. So what I'm going to do when I get out of boxing is to get myself ready to meet God because my plane might blow up. Don't planes blow up in this country sometime and crash? Don't people die every day? Subscribe right now.
back here on the Dean Show with my Irish brother here. Uh, we did a show. It was back. It was SD actually, Standard Def. Now we're <laughs> HD, right. and it was called Irish and Love and Islam. You actually uh -huh. come from a, a background of being a Christian, and you um, actually tell us in summary what what had you so interested. Uh, you, I know you read a um, autobiography on Malcolm X, and yeah, you, and and many other things. But in summary, what what was it about Islam that captivated you? To yeah. accept it. So as you said, I grew up, you know, grew up in a Catholic family, as most Irish people are Catholic, and actually it's very intertwined with the culture. And, um, uh, but, you know, as most people, by the time I was in high school and college, I wasn't really into religion. You know, I was into other things at that time. But I got fascinated with African-American history and with Malcolm X. So I became really into, the, into Malcolm X and studying from a historical perspective. But, you know, Malcolm X, one thing that he stressed, and Malcolm X spent most of his life even though he was a powerful political figure, he actually spent most of his time trying to teach people about Islam and recruiting people to Islam. First in the Nation of Islam, but then when he realized the Nation of Islam was not the total truth, when he accepted uh, Sunni Islam, he spent his time trying to teach people about Sunni Islam and trying to attract people to them. And he especially said for white people in America that they should study Islam. That because of his powerful experience on Hajj where he writes that amazing letter, he felt that this is something Islam, if it's actually taken in and actually appreciated and practiced is actually something that can uh, destroy racism and something that can bring people true brotherhood. And that is actually what I did find myself when I became Muslim. Uh, uh, when I was the first spending time around Muslims in the college setting, and that's why I love the college setting, that's why I came back to be a chaplain, you have Muslims from all over the world. You know, we maybe had 10 different, uh, 10, 15 different Muslims at a gathering for iftar, each one coming from a different country in the world, but all bound together by, by, by Islam, by, by their, their love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by their love of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and just being so humble. And I remember sharing an iftar, and we're all sitting on the floor, and just, you know, after that period of fasting, you're finally getting some food, and you feel so calm, and you feel the brotherhood and sisterhood. And that was actually what made me feel just in my heart that this is the truth, that this is what Allah wants for us similar to the experience that Malcolm had when he was on high. It's pretty clear when you look in Islam, the purpose of life, why we're being created, it's not just blind faith, there's evidence, proof, it's overwhelming when you look at it. There's no other way that you're going to look left or right, but you got to look straight and say, this is indeed, you know, know. like, you know, uh, there's no other explanation for it than, it, and, uh, than being a, a way of life from the Creator. It's, it's, uh, it's amazing. And that's why I said, like I said, like, I, you know, now I work at a Catholic university, I have probably even more understanding for, for Catholicism than I did in the past. But, and you see why naturally human beings, and you find many of the principles being taught that are the same principles, and you see why humans are attracted to it. But the basic thing about Islam that I think will always win anyone who seriously looks at it is just the La ilaha illallah. There is no God but God. There's nothing worthy of worship except God. So everything else in this world is creation. It's something different than God. God's creation. Don't worship the creation. Worship the Creator. That makes sense to anyone who thinks about it. And I think that's where people end up. They, they turn away from religion. They go away from what their parents were upon because now making God into a man, yeah. and now you can envision throwing a jab at him or a cross, I'll knock him out. Me versus Jesus in the earth. I'll tell you what, there's not a man alive that can beat me. <laughs> but Jesus ain't alive, is he? So I don't f***ing know. Maybe he could come back from the dead. Not, I don't know. Um... I'd still whoop us. You can't do that with God because God's not a man. Yeah. Nor did he die on no cross. I mean, and that, that concept just makes sense what you're saying. Worship the creator, not the creation. And from there, your heart just, it, 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 it tunes in. It recognizes the fitra. Um, Let me go to the next clip yeah. because there's a lot of people that are upset. One Christian pastor in particular. Let's see what he had to say. Okay. I'm telling you what, I'm going to pray that God strikes this guy dead. Mm. Do you know why? His name is Conor McGregor. Yes. And he's the UFC. Uh, I mean, these somebody. Hey, these guys are talking about striking him dead. I mean, uh, what's <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? That's We're, a little hardcore, and I think that, that guy's probably trying to get some attention himself oh. too. But 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 we know that anger comes out, and we know in the Muslim community sometimes our anger comes out when people say things that we know are out of line, out of pocket. But as we started off by saying, the point really is not for us as human beings to become angry with people, especially if they haven't even been given the message but to go and just talk to them and try to give them the message and, and like you said, make something positive come out of it. Like Allah, Allah, you see the way that Allah, if Allah wanted to strike him dead when he said that, Allah would, could have struck him dead when he Finish, said Finish, boom. It would be over. Allah doesn't want to do that. Allah is giving him more time because Allah wants to teach him something, give him a chance to change. 
And so we hope he takes that opportunity. Definitely. And may, people want to make uh, Muslims out like, you know, <laughs> we're, the, we're the vigilantes and violent. But we got a message of love and hope. And we want him now. God Almighty, a lot of times, uh, my next question, we put in all of this work and this effort. We pound our chest and we say, I, 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 I did it. It's my training. I, you know, without yeah. that. But what about the other element? Because, again, we couldn't, if we didn't have this air to breathe, the eyes to see with, if we didn't have the nerves inside of our bodies, you know, uh, just... Uh, uh, a disc goes out, L4, L, L, uh, uh, back, the back um, eight, nine discs, um, you're out, you're done, you can't do anything. SubhanAllah. And like I said before, that's the one thing that you realize, especially if you're sick or something, and you need help, you can't even get up and go to the bathroom for yourself, you can't do anything for yourself, you really realize how weak you are. And like I said, and Allah mentions this in the Quran, that the human being, when they get wealth, when they get status, they tend to become arrogant. And sometimes Allah has to humble us to remind us of what's really going on. And inshallah, the best of us are people who have that humility even if we're given blessings. And then Allah, if we're grateful when we're given blessings, instead of becoming arrogant, if we're just grateful for it and try to use it for good, then Allah will keep giving us more and more blessings. So how could he, now he's tuning in, the message gets to him, how can he take this situation, he hears this now, because every heart, he's, you know, uh, you mentioned the African Americans. He he loves the you know the bling bling, the hip hop. You know he can go back and connect with the roots of uh, uh, Kunta Kinte and Malcolm X, Muhammad Ali. They all found purpose in in submission to the will of God, Islam. They found purpose. Then they found contentment. But will you ever? It doesn't matter how many Rolls Royces you have, how many Lambos, how many selfies and muscles you grow. Uh, is that where the purpose is and contentment and happiness? Yeah, no, it isn't. And I think you can talk to people who have those things. And a lot of times they put on a front, just like people put on a front for the purpose of show business. A lot of times people put on a front and a fake, fake picture that this is bringing them happiness, this is bringing contentment. But deep in their heart, they know when they're alone, when they're re reflecting, when they've gotten a little hum humbled, that this is not bringing them happiness. And, but we want them to know that happiness is out there. And don't, don't keep chasing it through material things. Don't even keep chasing it through fame and whatever. You got fame because you have certain skills, you have certain blessings, people like your personality, that's okay. But now use that to show people that you, you can still learn and grow. This is what we love about Malcolm X, Muhammad Ali. Any people that we look up to, they may have gained their fame through different reasons, um, but what I think makes them people that we still talk about now and people that people still love and look up to rather than people that were forgotten is that they were humble enough to learn lessons to improve, to grow, and to change. So we always want to be able to change. And I think that's, that's what we would love to see from Conor McGregor. We'd He's love very it. well known. Make a change. Come to something. I mean, it will be beautiful. You know, there's other, other famous Irish Muslims like Everlast, the rapper from House of Pain and stuff. I, I really feel like he could, be start, he could be part of start a movement to, to, to show that being Irish and being Muslim makes sense together. And that's all about worshiping the Creator, not the creation. Something... I guarantee if he's sincere and he looks into it, he would indeed see that it provides all the evidence, rational, logical, and there's no other way but to see that this is the truth. Look, another um, misconception that is clear right now just by us sitting together, look, Bosnian American, <laughs> Irish, we talked about African American, Muhammad Ali, and it's for uh, the whole of mankind because it's a universal message. We'll be right back with more here in the Dean Show. Don't go anywhere. When I get out of boxing or when I'm through, I'm going to do all I can to help people. That's why I'm here with Johnny Walker. Here's a poor man came all the way to America. Here's a bunch of boys need some money. And somebody is calling me to help them. God is watching me. God, is, God don't praise me because I beat Joe Frazier. God don't give nothing about Joe Frazier. God don't care nothing about England or America as far as your wealth is all his. He wants to know how do we treat each other. How do we help each other. So... I'm going to dedicate my life to using my name and popularity, helping charities, helping people, uniting people, bring, people bumming each other because of religious beliefs. We need somebody in the world to help so make peace. So when I die, if there's a heaven, I want to see it. Because we live how long? 80 years? The odds are everybody in this room, some of you are going to be dead 20 years from now, some of you are going to be dead 50 years from now. Some are going to be dead 30, and some are going to be dead 60, 70 years ago. We all going to die soon. Subscribe right now. Back here on The Dean Show, you know, certain stereotypes 
are attached to certain people. And I know, I mean, I'm just sitting with the perfect example of an Irish Muslim that he's got to go beyond the beer and, you know, the foul language. Um, there's, got, there's more to life. And people in this position now, the young kids will look at someone like that, a celebrity status, and start to think, imagine everybody starts thinking that they're gods. Gods recognize gods. You know what I mean? Now, now we've gone more towards, you know, uh, uh, paganism and, and setting the worst of examples because now we're just lost. The soul is just bankrupt. You might have all the money, but your soul and heart is dead. But there's more. There's got to be. The, the Irish people will connect with this message because it's in all of us. I, uh, definitely. And I think, you know, I think we all find uh, a lot of people, especially for Irish people who are in America now, most of them have been here for a while. Their families have been here for many generations. They kind of, uh, alhamdulillah, there's a strong sense where people still hold on to being Irish because that means something to them. But unfortunately to many of them, it means something silly. As we'll see, uh, March 17th comes around. It means to them getting drunk, you know, uh, partying all day. Like this is somehow showing pride in being Irish. This has nothing to do with what being Irish is really all about. What um, is Irish being all about? So, I mean, being Irish, like I said, is all about really, for the people who come there, is really about siding with the oppressed. It's yeah. really about faith, family. You know, it's really about uh, identifying with the people who, the, who are downtrodden and really standing up for what's right, as well as having, you know, an ancient culture and ancient traditions that, that we try to, you know, uphold and try to uh, follow. But those traditions are based on values that we find in Islam. They're not based on values of partying and, and material consumerist culture like we were talking about. And so that's a really sad, and this is why one thing about Islam is that the Prophet, peace be upon him, he taught us to know your lineage, to study your history, to know where your people came from. Why? Not because to be overly proud of it or nationalistic or in terms of separating from other people, but we, like we said, the Muslims are all united together and we want to unite humanity together under Islam. But when you know where you came from, when you know your values, it helps you to know other people better. It helps you to know what's important. As, as you know, God says in the Quran, that we made you into different nations and tribes so that you might know one another. So the fact that we're in different nations and tribes is not an accident, it's not a mistake. God did it on purpose and there's value in knowing that. But once you know what that really is about, what the really true uh, nature of your heritage is about, it helps you to realize what's important in life. And what's important in life is your connection with the Creator and trying to uh, uphold values and help humanity. Let's go and because it's about yeah. shifting loyalty. Many people started to, you know, the large numbers of fans coming in. They feel like, okay, now this is our man who represents us. And you're only as strong as who you put all your effort in. And, and you see that at the end, what goes up comes down. You're a human being, you're weak. And hopefully this can be a learning lesson for Conor McGregor to turn that loyalty to the Creator of the heavens and the earth, Allah. Now tell us, let's in the last few minutes that we have, let's talk about some very important concepts. You talked about this when we were in SD and we had some great <laughs> feedback talking about the, the deep love that we have for Jesus, peace be upon him. You know, but Jesus also never called people to worship him. And people understanding also the concept of original goodness, not original sin. Can you get up into these core simple beliefs that just resonate? And I, and I, and I guarantee if a person is sincere, they'll say, I, I, I agree with that. And if you agree with that, then you should accept that. Mashallah. I'm glad, I'm glad you mentioned that because I think that is really important um, for people who do have an attachment to the faith. You know, Jesus is a very important figure and, and for all Catholics and all Christians. But, you, you know, in the Irish, I think they feel a special identification with Jesus and with Mary especially. And uh, these are figures that are in the Quran, the figures that are very important in our faith. But it's important not to take them in the wrong way. They're, they're beautiful role models and beautiful examples of human beings who were submitted to God in the most perfect way. Not, not of people who, and we don't, when we elevate them to being God, that's, that's making a mistake and that's really going astray. Um, and you'll find a lot of people, that's where a lot of people do get confused because they don't know what that means. I mean, I think they think they want, they want to have that identification to know that God cares for them. But the way to do it is not by turning God into a human being. The way to do it is by realizing that God cares for you uh, as a human being, that God is there to answer your prayers directly, that you don't need to go through any intermediary, that you don't need to go through a priest or a prophet or anybody, that the prophets give, bring messages, but you, you, go, you speak to God directly, you pray to God directly, you're going to stand before God alone on the Day of Judgment. And so you want to have that relationship with God. So uh, 
Christians who are listening to this, people who are interested, should really read about what the Quran says in the chapter of Mary, about Mary, about Jesus. The example we have of Jesus' life, again, was similar to what we say we pride the Irish being about, about standing for the oppressed, being submitted to God, bringing, bringing uh, social change, and really identifying with the downtrodden in society. And that's what, as we as people of faith, have to do. What advice? It's very hard. It's mm. very tempting when the whole world opens up to you. Now a person like Herger McConnor, who um, is at that you know, point where he's almost got everything, but definitely right now, you can like Ronda Rousey, I uh, don't know if you heard of her, most popular yeah. woman in the world, you know, thought she was unstoppable, and then she suffered a defeat, and then shortly after, she's on an interview talking about thinking, contemplating suicide, mm. right? But you got everything, you got the status, you can mm. still make it, you follow yeah. me? So how, what should someone, you know, now it's like that uh, humbling point and, you know, maybe you're, you're more receptive to the message. So what advice do you have for someone like Conor McGregor who's out there, and maybe, you know, he's tuning in? Yeah, I, 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 I hope he is. I hope this message reaches him. Just turn. Uh, really, you know, like we said, this is an opportunity to understand what's really important. I'm sure on some level you know what's really important. You know who are the people and the things that were important in your life before you became famous, the people who didn't just jump on the bandwagon, the people who stick by you even if you lose. Those, those things that are important, and God is of those things. God is always there waiting for you regardless of what we say about him. You know, we, we as Muslims say that God, the, like the, the greatest sin we can commit is shirk, mm. is comparing God to a human being, comparing God to his creation, worshiping something else along with God. But even, with, even when we do that, we, God is waiting for us to turn back to admit our mistake, and God will d definitely accept us. We say that if we take one step towards God, God will take two steps towards us. If we go to God walking, God will come to us running. And that's a very powerful statement because we know God is not a human being, God is not a person, but it's a very powerful statement that the only barrier between us and God is ourselves and our decisions. So really realize what's important, realize where you're going to find tranquility and happiness is with the Creator um, and with making a life that's really more meaningful than maybe what you said, what you thought before. And um, uh, I think if you do that, you have a potential not just for yourself, most importantly, but you have a potential to influence a lot of people who are paying attention, who want to see what you're going to do next. That's it, because these are planting grounds right now that we plant them because all, this, all those Rolls Royces are going to stay behind, right? Yeah. And we're going to die. Now it's time to do good deeds so they can flourish and we can have the everlasting reward in the next life, God Shalom. willing. Thank you so much. Thank you. For Always good to advice. see you. Good to see you. Peace be with you. Salam alaikum. There you have it, Mr. Conor McGregor. I hope that you really contemplate and think about the message, the wonderful advice. Now just imagine, I'll end with this story. Imagine if someone had given you a shovel, a light, a road map, water, and everything you needed to go ahead and dig up a treasure. You can find any of these tools anywhere else in the world, but the person who gave it to you, that was the only one who had these essential items that you couldn't see in the dark without the light. You couldn't dig up that treasure without the shovel. You couldn't survive out there without that water and that food. And then you ended up finding the treasure because you had the treasure map, the blueprint on how to find it. And then you finally dug it up and you forgot to give thanks to the one who gave you the shovel, the one who gave you the light, the one who gave you the food and the water and the drink and the road map. How would that be? You thank your trainer who helped train you. You thank your wife who helped you during those downtrodden times. But now the one who gave you the abilities and the one who actually put that treasure there, who doesn't need any of it, but just put it there to test you that when you achieve the success, Will you recognize the one who gave you the ability to be successful? And now what will you do with all of that? Will you boastly praise yourself and make yourself into a deity, into a God, and then be humbled? And now what will you do with that warning, that sign, because it's come to you? Or will you go ahead and take the advice, heed the call, the message, and contemplate and think? Think! because death can approach at any time. And money and fame and prestige and all of these things that we think that feed our egos, at the end, 
all of this stuff we leave behind in the grave. Really contemplate the day that when you had nothing and now you have something, what are you going to do to give back to humanity, to give back to society? Take what you need, but now to go ahead and recognize the one who gave you these abilities that you couldn't even throw a punch, a jab, block one, stand up tall. If it wasn't for the one who gave you the ability, who gave you everything that you have to achieve this great success. I hope that Conor McGregor, you will go ahead and think and reflect and ponder. And at the end of the day, it takes but the sincerity and earnestness inside the drive to just ask. Ask the one. Thank the one who made you, who created you, who gave you all of these faculties and blessings to guide you and to start to live a thankful, grateful life, and now you in the position that you're in, you can make a huge impact of goodness and plant seeds of goodness now. So when you leave this life, you can leave a legacy of good because many have come and gone and they've been forgotten. But how will you be remembered is how you live this life. And if you live the good life, a good life according to the way that the Creator wants you to live, you will have lived a successful life and then you'll have not only success, peace and tranquility and contentment in this life that money cannot buy, but then definitely you will have paradise in the next. And this is the message of all the messages, including Jesus, peace be upon him, Muhammad, Moses, Abraham, because they all call to the same call to worship the creator, not the creation. And that's that simple message. We hope that you got to benefit from this our brother, our Irish brother, Conor McGregor. And we'll see you next time. Tune in every week to The Dean Show. Visit us when you're in Chicago at our gym. We'll see you then. Until next time, peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. So what am I going to do when I'm through fighting? I only have 16 years to be productive, get myself ready to meet God and go to the best place. Don't that make sense? Thank you. Subscribe right now.